Hi, welcome to WiseCat. Today's question revolves around uh, adding more font capabilities to the Atto editor. So the problem is, uh, described in here, if we go into a label, say adding a label, and we want to go into the Atto editor here. Using the Atto editor, we don't really have a choice of what font styles we have. We have choices between different headings, pre-formatted or paragraph, but those are just formatting options. We don't have the a choice of fonts that we can add to our Moodle. So in order to add those, we actually have to use a third-party plugin. The plugin is called uh, the Font Family plugin. And if you actually go to the Moodle plugins database, you can just um, search for font and you get a whole bunch of different plugins. And especially if you want to narrow it down to what you're exactly looking for, you're going to be looking for an Atto HTML plug editor plugin uh, so that it can actually go into an Atto entry. And you've got a few different options here as well, background colors, etc., etc. Uh, you can add colors, size, or uh, font family, for example. This is the one that we're going to be looking at today. It's the font family uh, plugin. Now, it actually was only supported until 3.6, but it still works perfectly fine today, so we're just going to install it and see what happens. Uh, so we'll go back to our Moodle and we'll install the plugins and we'll come over here and now I can grab, see I've downloaded all three of those plugins, but I'm just going to do the font family one today. Uh, if I put that in there, uh, drag and drop it in and go uh, pull it, install, yeah, go through my server checks, etc. This part of the install is exactly the same as any other plugin. Uh, upgrade our Moodle database. Hello, hello, and it has upgraded to new version. And now we get to the new settings for this particular plugin. And you can see that the default actually has a bunch of fonts already listed. These fonts are actually pretty cool because they exist on most computers. So Arial, uh, Times New Roman as a uh, font that is, these fonts exist on most systems. So they're actually pretty useful as a, as a sensible uh, set of defaults. So when we come back in, Moodle code is up to date. Yay, I'm very happy to hear that. But now if we go back to our course and we try to uh, edit a label and we try to use it, nothing. We do not have a single additional editor. And that's because this is where Atto plugins are special, is that they need to actually be added to the toolbar. So we need to go to our site administration again. And inside of site administration, uh, we'll see for the uh, plugins, if we go to the plugins tab, and all the way down, we've got this uh, text editors exist here. And there's TinyMCE, which I mentioned in another video. Uh, but we've also got the Atto HTML editor here, and the toolbar settings are what we're looking at at the moment. Looking for at the moment. So these are all the toolbar options that we have, and this is the one that we just installed, Font Family. So I'm just going to copy that name, the toolbar config name there, because I'm going to actually add it to this toolbar. So all of these are actually groups, and your, your buttons are actually, this, this determines what buttons appear on that toolbar. And so we've got the collapse button, we've got the title, bold, uh, italic buttons, we've got unordered list, ordered list, indent, uh, links, so you can add a link, etc, etc, etc. We've got a whole bunch of different ones. I think I might actually just add it mm, straight after the italics button. So I just add a comma and add in font family in there. And now if I save changes, go back and, and open up another one of those uh, editor windows. Now my Atto um, editor here has changed and here's the font family button right there just straight after the italics button which is where I put it. And you can see that the default is to have these different fonts here. But what if I wanted some other fonts and the particular power of this may actually be is if you want to add in particular some additional Japanese fonts. Well yes you can do that as well um, but you have to get them. Now, Japanese fonts in particular, uh, I'd like to raise this point, but Japanese fonts are uh, big. 
There, there are you know thousands of kanji, so the file sizes for the actual fonts themselves can be very big. Uh, Western fonts tend to be a, a lot smaller in in file size, so you probably don't really want to actually download this. This is actually Google Fonts. Uh, it's got a, it's a great site and very useful for what we're actually doing. But you don't actually want to uh, grab the um, grab the fonts and download them yourself and sell them you can download the family but if you download the family the file size is going to be big if you try to serve that from your own server you're going to run into troubles of it being slow it will uh the font will kick in five minutes after or something or five minutes after you've actually added it so what we should do instead is actually let google serve it for us and this is uh, where this site becomes really, really cool. So we go to the uh, site, and I will leave the link in the description, but it's basically fonts.google.com, I think, uh, is it? Uh, yeah, fonts.google.com. And you just choose the ones that you want. So I want Noto Sans JP, which is a great Japanese font, nice, fairly easy to read. And I'm just going to click on the select this style and, and add it to my... Uh, my collection here and I don't need bold in this one this time so I'm just gonna go uh, back now and I go back to the previous page and so I've got that font that's in my collection here oh a serif font would also be nice I don't like serif fonts but some people like to use them so I know that some people are going to do uh, going to want them so I'm gonna add that one as well uh, let's go down further. What else do we want? Montserrat, uh, no, M plus rounded. Mm, I don't know. That could be. Uh, let's get some really. Let's get some Japanese ones. So if we go language, and go uh, choose the language as Japanese. Now we get a whole bunch of Japanese fonts, and we can find some pretty cool. Oh, that one looks pretty cool. So let's grab that one. Uh, okay, now this one's only got one single size, but yeah, so let's uh, grab that one as well. Now, the thing that we've grabbed it, but we haven't put it in the Moodle yet, is that this actually, this uh, Google site here, Google's font site here, what it does is it actually generates a link that you can add to your Moodle. And by adding this to your Moodle, you can uh, make them available. So I'm just going to copy this link code. And now I'm going to add that to my Moodle. And there are two places I need to add it. I need to first add it to the site and make the fonts available for the entire site. And the other place is to add it to this menu so it can actually be selected from the Atto editor. So we're going to go to a site administration. And this time we want to go to appearance and additional HTML. And we're going to add the link HTML to the head section of the document. So if I paste it in there, now that links to the style sheets from Google and means that I don't have to worry about uh, hosting those font files. They're just available now. So now I can actually put those fonts into this, um, this Moodle and they'll work. So let's go put them into the Moodle. The next place that we're going to need to do is actually we're going to need to look at that um, Atto editor thing that we did before. So if we go back down again, we've got a text editors section here, and we've got these uh, Atto HTML editor. We did the toolbar settings before, but now we've got this new set of settings here, the font family settings. This is because we installed that plugin, the font family plugin. And if you remember, this is what came up as soon as we actually had finished um, making the, uh, setting up the, uh, the plugin it, after it installed this was the default set of settings that we had to set so i think i'm going to get rid of say uh let's get rid of courier and times new roman um and let's even get rid of georgia and there we go we cleaned up that list a bit because we're going to add a few japanese fonts here and so what we want to do next is we want to actually grab the names of all these fonts. And the CSS rules actually are a pretty good place to grab the names from um, because they're actually going to be the same name. So I'm just going to copy these CSS rules. You probably wouldn't actually uh, do this normally if you're editing for another site, but that's a simple way of grabbing it. Font family, that first one is going to be what we actually need. 
So we're going to remove everything else except for that last semicolon. Um, so at the back end, I'm just getting rid of everything except for that last semicolon. Get rid of the cursive and the semicolon. And we're leaving that first section there. Now also font family up to that open quote, delete. Font family up to the open quote, delete. Font family. So now all we've got is we've got the font names there. Those are the actual names of the font families that we're adding. And we do actually have to give them a name that's going to appear in the menu. And this name can actually be Japanese. So uh, we say no to e sans. Why not? No to sans. E no to. I don't know if that's actually what it's supposed to be, but we'll go serifu. Serifu. And let's say uh, train one is the name of that one. So uh, densha. Densha moji. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay, we also do actually have to add an equal sign in between the name and the uh, font name. But once that's done, we can save that set of changes and it's ready. So now when I go into my Moodle um, and try to add a, a label, and if I want to add text, now I have options of adding different text. So, Nihongo uh, de. Kakimasho and uh, just having done that, I can highlight that text now and I can change its style. And so you can see inside this font family menu, now I've got the Noto Sans and that's changed it to Noto Sans, doesn't look very different. But if I change it to Noto Serifu, it changes its style to Noto Serifu. And if I change it to um, Densha Moji, uh, that looks really weird, All right? That looks really weird because it is, um, well, yeah, that is, that's weird. Anyway, I might make that bigger. Let's make that into a big heading so I can actually see the moji. But yeah, Nihongo de Kakimasho, that's what it is. Save that and return to course and it's available. It's there. And you, see, you can see there's no real delay in it loading up. Uh, Google web fonts are pretty awesome for uh, being loadable. They, they just pop up very quickly. If you were trying to serve this from your own server, uh, you could, but it'd take a, a, a couple of seconds before it loads. And this would just look as a default font until the loading of the font file was finished. Uh, this way, it just, it just works uh, and it's less messing around anyway. So Google Web Fonts. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Uh, I'll leave a link to the Google Web Fonts in the um, in the uh, uh, description underneath the video. Sorry, still new to the YouTube, but uh, anyway. Oh, by the way, I should remember this time to say like and subscribe if you like this channel, which I don't know, you probably still are, a hey, jury's still out, but uh, if you do like stuff like this, uh, please, um, give me a like, give me a comment perhaps and suggest an idea of a video that you'd like to see. Okay, thank you very much. Catch you next time. See ya.